even though we worried about making the bullets not last forever, so they're not going to use very important space in memory, there is something else we have to worry about. Every time we add a bullet to this game, every time we do this instantiation process, it takes some time for Unity to get that element, to put it inside the game and make it work. Okay, So actually creating and deleting elements, they are expensive operations. Okay, So you have to avoid that as much as possible. And at that moment you might ask yourself, okay, I'm a bit confused now. The bullet is something that has to be instantiated, but I have to avoid instantiating things. It sounds funny if you say it, but what you have to worry about is polling objects. Okay, And that polling uh, of objects is uh, as follows. You are going to have a little manager, something that is going to hold a certain object, a bullet for example. Then it's going to preload a certain amount of objects, so maybe you want to preload 20 bullets for example. And you're going to make these objects inactive. They're going to be kind of dormant. They're going to be unavailable for use. Basically they are sleeping and they are hidden in the game. And every time you want to spawn a bullet, instead of instantiating, you're going to get a bullet from the pool of objects because we already have one available. So that bullet is going to be activated and you can do whatever you want with it. So uh, it, it might seem a bit confusing, a bit complex for you to understand that, maybe if that's your first game or one of your first courses you're taking on game development. But this is one of the most important subjects in game development, which is object pooling. Okay, it's going to save you lots of processing power and memory as well. Okay, So we want to make a, a polling manager. So I'm going to come here in the hierarchy. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose create empty object. Okay, we're going to take this game object from uh, outside of the game controller. It's going to be right here. And I'm going to rename that as, let's see, uh, polling manager or object polling manager or object pooler, whatever name you think is going to work well. I'm going to call it object polling manager. Okay, we hit enter. It's in the position 000. It's not going to make any difference later, but still, let's leave it like this. And now we need to make a script for it. So I'm going to do the scripts folder to right click, select create, C sharp script, and then object polling manager. I'm going to hit enter. And before we move forward, we're going to make a folder. We're going to organize these scripts. So I'm going to right click, select create folder, and I'm going to name this as game. And I'm going to select both the bullet and the player and drop it here. And I'm going to make another folder. And I'm going to name that uh, utils. Okay. I'm going to put the object polling manager inside there. Okay, so I'm, I worry about a lot about folders because uh, it's important to keep things organized. And now that we did this, we're going to put a reference to that object polling manager. I'm going to drag and drop the script here. So, what we want to do is, at the player, okay, so if you open the player script, and which is this one, instead of instantiating the bullet like this, calling instantiate, we're going to try to get a bullet from the object pooling manager. So we want to access the object pooling manager. But how do we do this? There are two ways. One way is to make the player to reference the object pooling manager and well make a direct call for it. But that might be a bit ugly and that's not going to, to be easy to reuse later because if you make other elements, if you want to uh, pull particle effects for example or other bullets and several different things, you want to, to, if you want to access the pulling manager from other places, from the player, from the enemy, from the turret, from the door, whatever elements you have, you need to think of a better way to do this. So we're going to make a little mix of the singleton pattern. So the object pooling manager is going to have a reference to the only instance of that pooling manager that is going to be available in the scene, which is this little guy here. So what I'm going to do here is type private static object pooling manager instance. So there's going to be a reference to the instance of the object pooling manager. And now I'm going to type public then static object pooling manager instance with an uppercase I. I'm going to open and close curly braces and type get and once again between curly braces return instance. Okay, So it's a very simple uh, pattern that we're making for defining a property. 
If we go to the player and we type player, if we type object polling manager dot instance, we should access the instance that we have here. However, right now it's going to return null. So what we can do here is, instead of using start, we can use awake and we can type instance equals to this. So the awake method happens before the start method. So we're going to ensure that instance is going to be set once this awake method is going to be called, okay? And all of the other elements can access it in, in their start methods. Otherwise we have to worry about the script execution order, but let's worry about that later, okay? So this is going to be to, to make us able to access the object pooling manager. So as a simple test, I'm going to make here another method. Let's get rid of the update. And it's going to be public and then game object. And let's name this as a get bullet, for example. We're going to name it like this. And I'm going to print just a, a message here. I'm going to type uh, debug.log and say hello. And I'm going to type return null. Okay, we're not going to return any bullets right now. So let's save this. In the player, just to test it out, I'm going to type object polling manager here where we spawn a bullet dot instance dot get bullet which is this one here okay so let's see what happens if we do this I'm going to save let's go to unity let's select the console by the way to see the messages and now if we press play here we are if I click I'm printing the hello message which means the player is, is accessing the object polling manager without having a direct reference to it, which is perfect, exactly what we want. Now, we want the object pooling manager to be able to access the bullet prefab, to know what the bullet prefab is. So I'm going to type here, let's type below these, these pair of lines, public game object bullet prefab. Okay, so let's save this by the way, go to Unity, wait a little bit, and in the object pooling manager, we're going to drag and drop the bullet just like we did with the player. So prefabs, bullet, drag, drop, perfect. There we go. And now what we want to do here is we want to preload a certain amount of bullets. So I'm going to type public int bullet amount and let's use 20 as default. And here in the awake method, we're going to instantiate 20 bullets, but we're going to leave them disabled. So how are we supposed to do this? We're going to type it like this, for int i equals to zero, while i is less than 20, then do something, and finally i plus plus. So this is a basic loop that's going to execute 20 times, okay? But instead of using 20 here, we use bullet amount, okay? So you can scale that to whatever you want. And when this happens, we're going to type game object, bullet object, or we can just type here prefab instance because we want to make that uh, easier to reuse later equals to instantiate and then bullet prefab okay once we do this let me instantiate there we go bullet prefab once we do this we also want this bullet to be under the object pooling manager to keep things organized otherwise the bullets are going to appear at the root of the hierarchy so prefab instance dot uh, transform dot set parent and we pass transform as a parameter because because it's going to reference the object pooling manager and after we do this I'm going to type prefab instance dot set active and I'm going to pass false as a parameter okay so we're going to instantiate 20 bullets and all of them are going to be disabled so this time if I save this I go to unity and I wait for the processing to be finished if we press play and we look at the hierarchy, you see that the object pulling manager has an arrow because it's contain, it contains several objects inside it. If you open, you're going to see the 20 bullets in their sleeping, in their dormant state, okay? Which is good, now we have them. Now for the get bullet method. What we have to do is we have to store all of the references for the bullets that we have here somewhere. So we're going to need a list of bullets. So here, I'm going to type private list of type game object and it's going to be named bullets simple as that in the awake method before we we instantiate the bullets let me let's add a comment here so preload bullets we're going to type bullets equals to a new list 
of game object. Okay, that's a generic list of game object. And you can also start by including its capacity. So we already uh, pre-allocate a certain amount of spaces in our memory to load bullets. And the capacity is basically bullet amount. Okay, so we're going to make a new list that can store up to 20 bullets, which is good. Okay, and for the get bullet, we have to worry about something. Okay, we need to store the references for the bullets before try to use the get bullets. So here, when we instantiate the prefabs, I'm going to type bullets.add and between parentheses I'm going to pass prefab instance, just like that. Okay. And if you go to Unity, well, you're not going to see uh, the changes yet. Okay, We're simply going to, to preload the bullets. They're going to be stored internally in a list, in a generic list. But now we have to learn how to use them.